This video introduces three possible ways to approach when debugging browser issues with Puppeteer. In fact, the official documentation of Puppeteer specifies them as several tips, and we're just going to refine them. Let's start, but make sure to hit the like button in case you enjoyed, and subscribe to not miss new content. The first approach we should consider to take, is pretty trivial, and talks about checking the flow and how exactly the browser is operated, when scripting with Puppeteer a web application. That's fairly probable we would like to see how our script instructs the browser, what's actually displayed in it, and to visually make sure that everything is going perfectly. The problem, as we apparently guess, is that the browser is launched headlessly by default. This means that in order to take this approach, we should run the browser headfully. In practice it just means to disable the headless option, so that's a non-issue. But the thing is the script is executed very quickly, so we might miss the actual operations that the browser performs. To make it easier for us, we can use the slow-mo option to slow down Puppeteer's operations. After running the operations multiple times, at some point, we might get to the insight that the problem is not in the operations we perform using Puppeteer, but rather an actual issue on the web application. In this case, we should consider taking the second approach, which is debugging the application code in the browser. Basically it means to open the DevTools and simply start debugging. We can also open the DevTools programmatically by enabling the DevTools option instead of the headless option. In addition, we might want to hold the browser instance to not be terminated instantly, so that we could debug comfortably without a rush. Intuitively, we can avoid invoking the close method. But the question really is, how to hold the browser instance in a state between operations and not at the end of them. So in this case, we can use wait for target with a callback that returns falsy value to hold the process between the operations, until we terminate it explicitly. Some of us may wonder if it's possible to sleep the browser with a specified time period instead. Well, this is actually possible. We can create a sleep function that takes a duration parameter for example, and returns a promise that's resolved once set timeout finishes. Alternately we can just use the wait for method and pass to it the duration. But keep in mind we need a page instance to use that. The last approach we should consider taking, after figuring out the problem is not in the application code, is to debug the script itself that operates and uses Puppeteer. As we all know, Puppeteer is executed in a Node.js process, which is absolutely separated from the browser process. That's why we should treat it as much as we debug a regular Node.js application. In order to do that we can use a tool that connects to an inspector client, such as Chrome DevTools, VS Code, WebStorm and so on. Another way is simply using MDB, which is an improved debugging experience tool for Node.js. In spite of this, we can add the breakpoints programmatically, simply by inserting the debugger statement. Either way, it's merely placing the breakpoints right before the operation line we want to debug. Don't forget to hit the like button in case you enjoy, and to subscribe to my channel.